Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cardano Live today. I have Josiah Odosu with us. He's dialing in from warm, sunny Nigeria, and he's here to tell us about some of the challenges the people of Nigeria and that region have with, with savings. And he's a business developer. He's looking for people to help him build out the project. So he's here to talk with us today and tell us what's going on. How are you doing today, Josiah? How are you, sir? I'm good. Hello, Rick. I hope you are doing okay. I'm doing well, thank you. And thank you for right. being here today also. Uh, glad glad you took the time out of your day to come over here and talk to us. So uh, tell us a little about, about your story. We were talking before the podcast. We also spoke a few weeks ago. Um, what is savings in Nigeria like? Go ahead and tell us about that story you described to me. And then okay. what you plan to do about it. Okay. Um, savings in Nigeria, uh, it's it has a bit of uh, uh, jumps here and there, you know? We have, diff people use different methods to save in Nigeria. For instance, uh, the normal everyday businessman use what we call a, a Kawo system to serve. And this a Kawo system is a, a, a particular businessman who is responsible for collecting money every day, goes to one business to another, maybe in a particular street uh, uh, full of businesses. His clients are there. He goes to each one of them, collects their shifts, their daily savings from them, and he keeps it for them. This people, they don't want to go to bank and keep it because in most cases, this amount of money is very small, sometimes less than a dollar. So they collect this money from these people and keep it for them. And then at the end of the year or six months, they will go and collect the money from the uh, they will go and collect the money from the person they gave the money to. And the person that is collecting the money, in most cases, in fact, in all the cases, we use it and do business. And the people that gave entrusted the money to him are at the risk of losing their money because they gave it to one particular person, which anything can happen at any time. This is one of the means they save money in Nigeria. Another way they save money is what we call a SUSU system. And this is a system more of a cooperative. It's uh, very popular amongst uh, civil servants and people that uh, uh, get a certain constant amount every month or weekly. You know, what you do is maybe a group of four persons comes together, they uh, contribute a certain amount, say 50,000 Naira. So each of them will contribute the 50,000. 50, Assuming it's four persons, they'll contribute 50,000. 50, and the first person, or the person they elect to pick at that time will collect the money and solve his problem. The money does not increase in value. Say you are saving 50,000 50, Naira in, in four months, you get 200,000, right? But the particular need of this is people that want to solve immediate problem, maybe pay tuition, uh, maybe, maybe uh, 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 start building a house, start a new project or a, a side business or maybe a health issue. And this is amongst group of friends. It's normally among group of friends, people that know each other very well, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, another way people save money in, in, in Nigeria is uh, a lot of people put money in the banks. And you know what? Inflation rate in Nigeria is high. How high is it? Like Inflation rate in Nigeria is high. I think uh, inflation rates in Nigeria should be around 16% or so. Wow. All right. So let me kind of revisit your descriptions here. In the first scenario you described, it's like the average person, the average worker, if they want to save, they have uh, three, about 300 Nira a day, you were telling me earlier, and that's about a dollar US is the average yes. income? Yes, okay. uh, this is the, uh, some of them sell below that, below below a dollar. Some can save as much as uh, uh, 20,000, 5,000, uh, 
3,000, depending on what you are capable is, they normally do it as you are capable, but in most cases, it's constant amount. Okay. You know? And uh, another thing is this, uh, uh, amongst the young people, there is this uh, idea, this fear of putting money in the bank. Why? Because Why this, do they fear that? Because of what I said, inflation currently is at 11%. Okay. You know? So normally, uh, if you have a certain amount in the bank, after a few months, the, the dollar value, because dollar is very important here, the dollar value when you compare to Naira to dollar value is depreciated. A lot of people are now flocking into cryptocurrency. That okay. is what is pushing a lot of people to cryptocurrency. Okay, so if people put their money in a bank currently, which is a very ad hoc method, the average person making about a dollar a day and they want to save, they do want to save, a guy comes around and collects up that basically dollar a day, they have to trust this person and they hold it for them and they get no interest or very little interest in an economy that has an inflation of about 16%. Is that correct? Can you get the picture very well. They, they don't get any interest. The person collecting the money is, is acting as a service provider. Okay. You know, if, for instance, if it's a dollar and uh, that you want to sell, say 500 Naira, for instance, and to go to the bank and come back is 200 Naira, you know, transport fare. So when you must have gotten to the bank, you, what you have is 300 Naira remaining. You see why these people are acting as service providers and they don't get any interest from this. In some cases, they are charged. Okay, they're charged to use the savings account at so, the so bank. The, it's not the savings account at the bank, to use the thrift system for the people that is collecting the money from them. Ah. No, no, <laughs> no, you that is service charge. You know, you pay for the card, like they have a card where they record all the transactions. So you pay for your card, you know, all yeah. these things. And when it comes to Nigerian savings accounts, the interest rate is very low. And not only that is very low, in some cases, you don't get this interest. Look at what they do. If you are, if you saving, uh, uh, if you have 5,000 Naira in your savings account and they give you an interest of say 2%, very generous. Yeah? That 2%, very generous per annum, when you, compare it with the service charges that will come from the bank, SMS charges, email alerts charges, and all whatnot, including ATM charges. At the end of the day, the person that kept 5,000 Naira in Nigeria in a bank, uh, uh, after a year, might be seen around uh, 4,000. <laughs> 4, wow. <laughs> it's very funny, yeah. 4,500, okay. 4,800 Naira. <laughs> So if you try to save money uh, in Nigeria using the current banking system, you're likely to lose money by saving it. You will lose money from the charges, uh, the bank charges. You will lose money as a result of inflation. Yeah. In any way you look at it, the person that is saving is losing money. Okay. So the person that is saving is using money, but the young people like crypto. And why was that? Why, why do they like crypto? You know, uh, aside from the fact that crypto is uh, decentralized, a lot of people have started, uh, a lot of young people have uh, found a way to make money via cryptocurrency, you know, via trading and uh, staking and all that. They find out that having their money in cryptocurrency, if they can manage it well, it's even more profitable. Okay. And as, uh, Okay, so assuming you are saving in a stable currency, for instance, uh, BUSD or USDT, for instance, you know, the, when you compare it with the money you kept in Naira, you have more advantage and you can stake this amount and get uh, returns. So a lot of people are finding cryptocurrency more uh, 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 better than a better option than uh, putting their money in the bank. Okay, so Cardano is on the right track with trying to get more service in Africa with cryptocurrency. Seems like a pretty reasonable approach on the right track. 
right? Yes. Because young people are interested in savings. Okay. And you described three different savings model. You had the average person who makes about a dollar a day. And in order to save a dollar a day, they got to spend a, a half a dollar just to take, just to get to the bank. In some cases, or they give it to the thrift uh, 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 operators. You know, okay. sometimes it's, it's, it's more than a dollar, but the basic thing is they prefer giving it to the thrift operators because at the end of the, they mostly use do it for budget purposes. Okay. If they want to solve a particular problem. Then you, the, aside from the thrift operators, you have the, the cooperative, few friends come together and rotate money, you know, then uh, you, 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 then the people that insist on saving in the bank. Okay. So the cooperative is a, a, like a third method people can use if they're if they and their friends have enough money they can team up and yes. try to save money more efficiently. Yes. Okay. Now the second method you described that's more for the rich people in Nigeria who have enough money five thousand uh, of the local currency ten thousand. The average person can't afford that, can they? The the, the social system uh, is discriminative. You know, okay. uh, because uh, a student that wants to save part of his allowance cannot use the SUSU system. It's because he's they don't approve it. He doesn't have because, enough money because he doesn't have enough money. OK, you know, and his money is not constant. He's not okay. expecting a certain amount of money weekly, uh, uh, yearly or, or monthly. You know, and then they prefer to do it within a circle of friends that trust each other. You know, okay. I can see why young people would prefer crypto because the current system is it doesn't seem as effective as, as crypto. I mean, it is a system now in the United States and European countries and North and South America in general. The average person can put savings in a bank. And they'll let you put money in the bank, even small amounts. But sometimes there's a service fee that will eat away at a little bit. And there's a very, very, very small interest rate that doesn't make up for the service fee. So it's it's similar, but it's not as pronounced because the options that people have. I mean, if you're, lo you're losing half of your money to trying to store the money, either through inflation or transportation costs or service costs. Or charges. <laughs> or charges. So the only way to do it is for people to kind of team up. Well, three different ways of doing it, teaming up and making a cooperative. Or if you make enough money, you can actually use the proper banking system, right? Yes. If you make enough money, a lot of people that, that, that have enough money don't care about those charges. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yes. They don't care about those charges. They go ahead and use it. And, you know, the system at some point, it's, it looks like it's comfortable. But when people started seeing, you know, we're in a global village. When people started seeing uh, 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 what is obtainable in, in other countries, they understood the deficiency of the system we have. Okay. You know, and that's yeah. brought about a hunger to, uh, to want something more uh, efficient, something better. That's awesome. Now, you know, I got to admire young people. They want something better. They see cryptocurrency or whatever. They see a new or better way and they want to adopt that. And that is fantastic. And, you know, so I was wondering what methods, we were talking about this before the podcast, what methods do people have of storing their crypto? Desktops, laptops, mobile devices, what do they have available to them if they do decide to shift to crypto or you can build some sort of system for them? What do they have? A, a, a lot of people prefer... Uh centralized exchanges. Binance is profound in Nigeria. The presence of Binance in Nigeria is profound. OKS is profound. So a lot of people don't care about the risk about saving their money in centralized exchanges. They go ahead and save it because you can imagine where centralized exchange looks as more better options to people than banks. There you go. So, I mean, that makes total sense. And crypto people right now, they're probably cringing. If anyone's in the chat, let me know if you're cringing right now that the best way to save is by using Binance. No hit on Binance. Binance runs a good operation. If there's no fees or very little fees to put crypto in and take it out just straight in and out, we're not talking about converting crypto, then... Yeah. Uh, that's an interesting business model. Maybe that's why there's so many people using Binance 
uh, because it's kind of like an online bank, although it's centralized. And like you said, Josiah, there's a risk involved with using that sort of centralized mechanism. Yes. Yes. It's better than handing I, I, it to some I, guy. I, I, like, cannot, yeah. I cannot deny the fact that a, a lot of people still serve which are uh, uh, dApps like Trust Wallet, uh, well, uh, Trust Wallet, uh, Metamax, some people that are more advanced in this space. And a very tiny amount that serve with uh, hardware wallets. Very tiny, very tiny. Okay, small amount in hardware wallets, all right. But people are trying. They're trying their best to retain the value that they worked hard to acquire. And that's the important part. That's what especially, everybody wants to do. Especially young people, you know. The major Nigerian population is more of young people. So the, these people, they've seen a lot of them I'm not trying to talk my the banks in my country, but a lot of them see the banks as oppressions that are against them. Instead of oppressions that is supposed to help them. Yeah. You know, I got to tell you, I, I actually applied to my own bank. And this is first world problems, I guess we would call it. I applied mm -hmm. to my own bank for a business loan. They said, no, thanks. We don't want to deal with crypto. So they the, my bank shut me down for a small business loan for my stake pool operation. And they kind of, they're like, no, thanks. Then I tried a few other banks and they're kind of like, oh, you, you're going on a waiting list. But in the, in the case that you have, people are using Binance, uh, decentralized exchanges, wallets, stuff like that. All right, so kind of moving forward, where are you at now and what do you hope to achieve? And I just want to let the viewers know, we have links down below. If you are a developer who can help Josiah out as in he's looking for people who want to build in Nigeria. He's, he's the businessman here. So I'll let Josiah speak to it. The links are down below. Uh, his email is down below in the description uh, and you can contact him at his email address. So Josiah, wh where are you at today with your development process? How many people do you have on the team? Tell us a little bit of story about that, please. Okay, first of all, before I tell you where we are at, uh, okay. I'll tell you what we are trying to build because we've talked about uh, 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 the problems. We've not talked about how we actually want to solve the problems. So uh, we, 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 when you look at the uh, Kawo system, for instance, the one you go to give your money to an operator, you know, we, we are building a system whereby people save in a decentralized and trustless platform daily. Move that your money that you would have spent on things that are not very relevant to you. For instance, pay as you go subscription, uh, pay, pay, not pay as you go because we don't have pay as you go here, you know. Uh, uh, subscriptions like DSTV, you know, that at the end of the month you don't watch. It's cable network. You don't watch it. So, so the pay as you go subscriptions are, are not effective. They are not effective. Oh, no, not, not pay as you go. I'm sorry. So the re the cyclic subscriptions, like pay for an entire month, month after month, the preferred method is pay as you go, only pay for what you use, correct? Yes. Monthly uh, 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 subscriptions are not effective, you know, but pay as you go, it's very, very effective. And we don't have it here. You know, so a lot of people, a lot of people, uh, uh, West, uh, will I say, I'll call it West, money on things they don't actually need. And what we are saying is this, for the Akawo system, you can actually put that money in your own wallet. Mm -hmm. You know, where you can, you have options. For instance, you can put that money in your wallet and use aggregated uh, lending because we want to aggregate uh, different lending platforms so that people can choose the best rates, you know? So okay. the money you, you've, you've put in into the system, you can now uh, uh, lend it to somebody in need and get the rewards from it, you know? And for the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, ASUSU system, we are building uh, a crowd staking system where people can actually, uh, in group, say uh, four persons, each of them have 500 ADA and they, they want to come together and put this money together and get a reward. Now, normally, if you put that reward individually, you still get the same amount. But remember the SUSU system, the idea of the SUSU system is this, 
four persons contribute and, they, and one person takes the entire amount and solve his problem. Now we are saying, don't touch your capital. Is of your capital rotates the rewards. Let the first person take the entire rewards of the four persons, for instance, and the second person till the circle is complete and the capital is returned to the owner. And we want to do this in a decentralized and trustless uh, 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 platform. We want to make it decentralized and trustless so that you don't run the risk of somebody absconding with the rewards and not finishing the circle or absconding with the capital and, and uh, when he has gotten his own rewards, you know? Yeah. Wow, that sounds like an extremely effective use of how crypto has been designed and exactly the type of problem it's trying to solve. You were telling me before the podcast, if people use the current system, uh, they have if they use cash and they save it in the current banking system, they how does it work? They get they might get their capital back, but they don't get any investment rewards or no, you don't get any investment rewards. Okay. If normally savings account is supposed to give you a reward for saving. Okay. Yeah. You know, but yeah. in this case, you don't get any reward. Actually, you are charged for using a savings account. Okay. So you're charged for using the accounts. Inflation yes. devalues the money, and there's no real rewards, even though your money was locked up and used <laughs> as an investment. You know, and when uh, there is this uh, particular student, you know, that had. 2000 naira in his account and that's his last money yeah. and he wanted to solve a problem so okay. he went to the atm he had his atm card he went to the atm and wanted to withdraw 2000 naira and they told him insufficient fund what happened what? i had 2000 naira two few days ago it happened yeah. towards the end of the month you know and uh, uh he, he, he was surprised when he checked his account he saw around 1,800 and something naira. They've compounded all the charges for the previous months that they, for the months that he used, you know, and charged him. And instead of having 2,000 naira, he's having 1,800 and something naira. And he couldn't withdraw. He can only withdraw 1,000 naira for ATM that pays 1,000 naira denomination. So saving there, this kills a lot of young people. Yeah. And one thousand naira is the equivalent of about three or four dollars. Yes, one thousand naira is equivalent to about three dollars. About four. three dollars. So, okay. So this scares a lot of people, you know. Yeah. So the idea of this is, if you keep twenty thousand naira in the bank, in a few months, expect around nineteen thousand nine hundred and something, if they are generous. Okay. All right. So you have identified a problem that you are trying to solve. Okay. And that problem is the savings, you know, and helping encourage young people to save in an efficient manner, right? And now, how do you hope to achieve that? What's your goals going forward? Because it's still early, right? It's very early stage development for you and your team. Right? Like you carefully observed, uh, we are still at the earliest stage of uh, this project. And that is why we need a capable technical hands to help and support. But then the aim of this project is to make savings easy and profitable. You know, you okay. want to give people, uh, you're about to say something? Oh yeah, no, I, I totally agree with that goal. Make savings easy and profitable. Perfect, and profitable. Use, perfect use case for crypto. Perfect use case <laughs> if I ever heard one. <laughs> so, but there's a risk in crypto too. Number go up, number go down. <laughs> so we are trying to give people uh, uh, an option to save and we are not just put your money and save it and leave it there. We are creating investment vehicles for them to put in their money there and get rewards. You know, yeah. if you want, if, if for instance, you need urgent money, you can use the crowd staking and you, your capital is reserved for you, but you can take the reward. If for instance, you don't care about the crowd staking, you can use the aggregated lending, you know, choose the best rates. Uh, uh, for instance, you don't want to, you, you, are, you are afraid of the fluctuations of the, uh, of the market. You can choose to use uh, stable currencies and stake. Okay. You know, so yeah. when you, when you, when you stake, you know, 
when you stake, uh, you, you at the end of the, the rewards is far better than when you, you kept it in the bank. And then we are working at it. Uh, we will also implement a, a DAO, you know, uh, such that uh, we can help upcoming projects. So this okay. also is a, an investment vehicle for people. Because if you get in early in a project that is legit and solid, uh, they have solid value they want to uh, uh, offer to people, of course, at the end of the day, that project will yield results for you. Let me not make sure, let, uh, let me call names, for instance. Uh, uh, Coinlist recently uh, uh, did sort of initial coin offering for uh, their users, and I was one of the participants. Believe me, if you participated in that with a thousand, uh, with a, uh, a hundred dollar, the reward is close to three thousand plus dollar as of today. Wow. And uh, it vested over a year. That means you don't do run the risk of selling early. Okay. You know, so we we are going to offer people the opportunity to invest in profitable uh, upcoming uh, businesses with focus in African uh, businesses, of course. Okay. So a Cardano DeFi type solution, I'm thinking of a couple of things. I'm just throwing them out there. A DeFi type solution, a saving solution, possibly a stable coin solution to thwart inflation, right? Um, because the, you know the staking ADA is awesome. It returns five percent, about five point two, five point three percent in the current time frame. So you have that avenue, right? And then you also have like a stable coin avenue or something like that. Are those the kind of avenues you're exploring here to give people a better way of savings? Yeah, I'll give you a minute to get your your uh, lighting sorted out there. You got, I got to hand it to Josiah. He's a real champion here. Because before we dialed in, we had to solve this buzzing sound. Are you are you currently running on solar power and mobile hotspot? No, 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 I've uh, charged up my systems and switched up the solar. If not, the buzzing sound will be there. Yeah, the buzzing <laughs> sound is gone. We have no buzzing sound. That was the solar power charging system. And then your internet is currently via mobile hotspot. <laughs> and, and this is this this is Nigeria. We, we have to make it work for us. <laughs> you have to make it work. There you go. That's some rugged individualism right there. So Josiah's on the podcast today. He did everything he could to make it work. Well done, sir. <laughs> well done. He's like, Thank you very it looks much, great. Sir. Your video's great. Your audio's great. You you sir are a true champion. All right. So <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so you have all the, you have different solutions offered by Cardano where you can build on Cardano to offer people savings opportunities. No, there, there is one of the risks I got to ask you about is, you know, with with ADA, if if you use ADA for savings, you know, it can the crypto number can crash. Is it worth the risk, or how do how do you mitigate that risk uh, of the crash? No. This is it about is a uh, seven with Ada, for instance. Mm -hmm. Either you leverage on the uh, stake rewards and use it to cover for the uh, moment uh, for the temporary crash. You know, yeah. Or you don't save with Ada at all. You can save with stable currencies if you don't want to run the risk of uh, the, the market fluctuations. Okay. All right, so I kind of get where you're going. Saving with a stable currency at least prevents you from suffering the 16%, 20% inflation, and it also saves you the fees associated with the savings accounts and, yes. and the transit. So there's some huge gains to be had there. All right. Um, let's see. If there's if anyone, if any of the viewers have questions, let me know in the chat. We'll make sure we hit your questions. Josiah and, Josiah and I have just a few more things to touch on, and we'll get to your questions there. And one of them was scams. And Josiah is familiar with the concept of scams. He told me before the podcast. Before I go into it, I'm going to pull up the screen share real quick just so people know, because anytime we're talking about uh, savings and investing and using cryptocurrencies, we do like to alert people to scam awareness, and then Josiah will tell us about his experience and understanding of people, the people that he's worked with. Okay. So I'm going to do that screen share here real quick. 
Uh, and then we'll read over the questions. You don't have to answer them now because your business is way too early stage, but some of them you can answer. He said, I showed him the questions and he said, yeah, I can answer some of those questions now. Okay. So let, let's give it a go. What do you say, Josiah? Sound good, man? It sounds good. All right. Let's sounds give good. it a shot. Let me try sharing this window and I'll make sure everyone can see it. Okay. All right. So here's the important. These are risk assessment questions. Okay. Now, one thing we got to be careful of is you don't you don't want every new businessman trying to launch on Cardano. You can't just call them a scam out of the box. You'll scare everybody off. But it is important for each person to apply due diligence with just which Josiah spoke about earlier. And you have to ask these questions. Right. And these are the questions that I brainstormed um, with Cardano community members on Twitter where I asked people for their inputs. These are the questions that came up. And so here's what we got so far, Josiah. Let us know what you can hit on, like the first one. Uh, in which country is your business registered? Okay. Um, we are in the process of registering the business here. We want to register it here because our primary focus is on Nigerians and Africa. So it's, 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 it's flexible for us to register it here. And that's what we're doing. Very soon, uh, we'll have a, a CSE a certificate. CSE okay. is corporate, corporate Affairs Commission. They are responsible for registering businesses in Nigeria. Okay. So when you register the business and it is uh, trust financial, it has to be registered in Nigeria properly. That's what you're getting yes. at, right? Okay. Yes. Yep. All right. Okay. And what uh, the name of the CEO or the lead on your team, is that you? Right now, uh, I'm leading the team. There is no term per quotes for CEO, but I'm leading the team and uh, it's working fine so far. Okay. Uh, and then which country is CEO located? Obviously your team, you're currently in Nigeria. Uh, uh, yes, I'm in Nigeria. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and then there, there's the question, if the rug gets pulled, who goes to jail? I know. <laughs> Obviously, <it's a> rug. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Obviously the, there won't be a rug pull. Because we will, uh, uh, want to implement a system that is solid. Like I said, it must be trustless and decentralized for it to be able to uh, uh, cancel out the local uh, system that we have. You know, so yeah. that is that is one major factor. And again, we will we'll follow uh, through uh, legitimate and proper registration. That is why it's taking some time because we want to make sure we do this, the things properly. And obviously, uh, our faces are on it. We are not anonymous team. You know, our faces are on it. So we are answerable to whatever goes wrong. But we know nothing will go wrong. That is why we are doing the best to make sure we build the best system. Man, you're, you're a brave man, Josiah. You are a brave man. Okay. Uh, now, there's a question. Is the offer too good to be true? Um. Sounds reasonable to me. Okay, so this oh. is risk assessment. Okay, <laughs> obviously I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's not okay. uh, too good to be true. Because I'm, the not problem is... <laughs> I'm not saying, hey, if I send you one Bitcoin, you'll send me two back, right? <laughs> no, 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 don't send to me. Keep it in your wallet. <laughs> Invest it from your wallet. That's, That's what important. You're saying. <laughs> That's, all right. That's important. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. Now, here's a, here's some of the tougher questions. How long have you been in business, and what is your track record in history? Now, I got the link. I got the link to your LinkedIn down in the description below. Okay. But uh, how long you been in business and track record? Anything on that? Um, uh, I've been in business since uh, 2017. You know, uh, because uh, prior to 2017, I worked a year for a uh, uh, bank, one of the top banks uh, in Nigeria, Guaranteed Trust Bank. You know. Uh, after that, uh, uh, after my mandatory one year service here, because you must serve the fatherland, and I did that as a teacher. After the mandatory one year service, uh, I figured out uh, the, 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 the banking system is not for me, you know, so I have to, and I wanted to uh, make my own impact. I started a company, Joe uh, uh, Technify, which is properly registered and functioning. You know, and Geotechnify is primarily an IT company that seeks to bridge IT gaps in Nigeria. Is it the small business that is having a, a, a network uh, problem that needs solution? We offer it. Is it a, 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 an entrepreneur that wants to build a website? We offer it. 
uh, is it uh, primarily IT? We are the purpose is we want to bridge IT gaps, and it's still functioning. Okay, and then uh, uh, after that, uh, I have to niche further to uh, uh, so start up another venture, Devilus Pro. Devilus Pro, uh, it's it's uh, it's want to solve the problem of entrepreneurs that want to start up an e-commerce business, but they don't have the means, the technical uh, resources to start up. So what we do is we are a team of uh, Shopify partners. So what we do is this, we help you build that business. We help you from ground up, you know, we help you build the business and then uh, offer help uh, every now and then. Okay. So I'm going to bring, oh, I'm going to go ahead and bring that screen share down. Thank you for that thorough description. And you also described me. There was one question on there. I got to touch on two more questions. We'll, we'll wrap it up for the day. I'll take any viewer questions, but um, one of them was what are the key risks associated at this point in time? And what it appears to me is it's still a very young business is one of the key risks and you, need developers right you got how many you have three people on your team so far yes okay. Rough trip people. okay and so the the challenge that you're facing here josiah that the people need to be aware of is josiah is going to need to compete for or cooperate for developers who are operating on the plutus private test net and those developers are they're a hot commodity right now, in my opinion. They're a hot commodity to get those Plutus developers that are being trained on the private test net. And the question then becomes, how do we get them, right? So that's all part of the risk assessment. You know, how can you acquire these developers that know how to code in Plutus that can help Josiah to build the system he's trying to build, right? How do you make those connections? So uh, that's a heck of a challenge. I mean, you got any... <laughs> If you have any comments on that, let me know. What do you think, Josiah? How are you gonna how are you gonna get those developers, man? Because there's big companies out there. There's companies probably in the US, South America, North America, Europe, Asia. These companies are gonna be competing for those people who learn Plutus early. And they're gonna be like saying, Hey, come work with us. Uh tough job, man. How are you gonna do it? Okay. Okay, Rick. Um, uh, <laughs> yes, like you said, uh, uh, like you said, uh, sorry, Rick, uh, give me a moment, please. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. All right. Well, Josiah has to answer that now. He is uh, in the, he is broadcasting from Nigeria and uh, he's got other folks around, so he's got to take care of business sometimes. All right. All right. Okay. All right. So Josiah is back with us. What you got, buddy? Okay, uh, so like I said, uh, we are competing with a, a lot of uh, 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 big money and uh, big company. Of course, uh, if you look at Cardano, for instance, they, they are actually hiring and people need to fill up these pos uh, positions. And it's more of technical uh, 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 people that they need. But what we are doing is this. We are coming to this Bluetooth uh, 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 pioneers with the need because africa uh, cardano is about helping the local man on the streets this is the goal this i feel is the goal of cardano and yeah. this is what we are trying to do and we that is why we are coming to uh uh, uh Plutus pioneers with the story with the problem you know and we are saying, help us solve this. You will be changing lives. Okay. You'll be impacting a lot of lives. And a lot of youths in Nigeria and Africa will be grateful for having this system. You know what? That is a wonderful message. That is, I'm glad to hear that because something that a lot of software engineers, software developers, and business developers, entrepreneurs, they... So you got to make money, got to pay bills, right? But they like to build, they like to build, they like to solve problems. That's the key. So there are people out there who like to solve problems 
And so I think there is a there is a reasonable chance that you can find you you'll find those people who want to solve problems and say, you know what, this is this is a real problem. I would like to solve it. I would like to help these young people save money who are looking for a better way. And you're there on the ground. OK, this is not some Heidi flighty pie in the sky idea that make gives me a nice, warm, fuzzy feeling. You're feeling it. You're right there, right? You're you like see, you see. You see how it's going so far. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? I see how it's going so far. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. who actually needs? We actually have to uh, uh, remember what you said about data. We actually have yeah. to uh, confirm and do another subscription to make sure that this thing works perfectly. You know? Oh yeah. So, uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. So we got yeah. we got to wrap up. <laughs> so yeah, we, we, I, we are on ground, you know. Okay, yeah, you're on the ground. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. So, so a reminder to ourselves, to everybody watching, and everybody here, is all you know, you do your risk assessment, but you got to look at what is the what is the benefit, what is the reward, what is the outcome, what are we trying to achieve, and then you balance that risk and what you know you put everything together and make it work josiah we, we probably gotta get wrapping up because of your scription right before the podcast you had to renew real quick to get your data so you get enough data uh we do have to upload the audio so that's going to suck up more of your data okay like i said I, I took care of that so we don't have a okay. problem of uh, the data finishing before time no 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 okay all right no, you no, did that no, right no. The, right before wrap up we to, okay, <laughs> yes, right before I, we I, started, I, you up the down. I, I, I'm, I just mentioned that because uh, uh, to paint a picture that we're on ground, we're feeling you're on it, the ground, you know, you're on the ground. Yes, we're feeling it, and uh, a lot of young people are feeling disenfranchised, uh, uh, are feeling left out in the country because uh, the system is not inclusive, it's not encouraging young people, you know, and this is yeah. what we are trying to do. If you work hard for your money. You should get the most out of it. Yeah, you should. And they should be able to keep it. You should be able to that keep it. And if you decide to save it and invest it, yes, it, there should be a reward for saving and investing your money. And right now, there is a penalty. If people try to save, they're going to actually lose money by trying to save, right? All right, man. Looks like you have a huge task ahead of you. And I applaud you for giving it a massive effort and everything that you have ahead of you, because there's a lot to build. There's a lot to build. All right, Gary Golden asked me a question. Gary Golden, he's a futurist from New York City. Gary, thanks for being in the chat with us today. And he he he, he made a comment. Well, Rick, have I got a warm, fuzzy feeling T-shirt ready to sell by the holidays? No, Gary, I will not have a warm and fuzzy. I have a warm, fuzzy. My risk, my risk assessment methodology is always, you know, something. It's a process. It's a learning process. Uh, I'm, I get a warm fuzzy about Josiah, but a warm fuzzy about projects that are very early that uh, that puts the risk. I put on a scale of one to 10 right now, the risk is above nine with 10 being high risk and one being low risk. You know, we're looking at about 9.5 because it's still very early on. Right. So it's very high risk at this point and it would require more developments. And Josiah, would he can always come back to in a future podcast at once developments occur and give us some updates. You know, that's always available. All right. So before we wrap up, just say, what else, is there anything else you want to tell us or tell the audience um, about your experience, your vision moving forward, anything like that? Okay. Um, yes, I have something to tell the audience. You know, okay. this, this is not just uh, another Nigerian uh, or African project. This is about, like I said earlier, impacting lives. Because... If people have control over their finances, they can make better decisions about their future. And uh, a lot of young people, uh, they need direction, you know, they need purpose, they need vision. All these things are not possible if you don't have, if you can't control the little one you make. You know, so uh, this is uh, uh, me talking from my heart to all the uh, uh, technical people out there watching, you know, come on board, help us build this thing, help us make Africa a better place. 
by building a seamless and trustless and decentralized way to save. Thank you very much. Thank you, Josiah. Powerful message. Great way to wrap up the podcast. Thank you for coming on today. Uh, there's some folks in the chat. They suggest your project catalyst. Um, we can look, do you look at project catalyst options as those be, uh, as yes. possible? There you go. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, go ahead. You uh, can touch, touch on that. We'll, we'll be, uh, uh, will be a, a live on Project Catalyst. Uh, we'll be submitting a, a, a proposal on Project Catalyst uh, very soon. Uh, so the reason for the delay is uh, to make sure that everything is put in place right before we apply. We don't just want the money. We want to make sure that we use it properly. And we want to make sure that when we apply, we get approval. Gotcha. So you're building the team so that when you apply, the application is ready for community review. Yes. Understood. Awesome. Josiah, inspiring message. Thank you for coming on Cardano Live today. And to all the viewers, thank you for watching Cardano Live. Feel free to share this video with your friends, your family. If you don't need developers who are building on Cardano, have them check out in the description down below. There's some links to a very new website, a new Twitter account. There's a new YouTube channel. And there's the email to reach Josiah at, uh, at the gmail.com down below. So that you, if you're looking to, if you want to help them out, if you can help them out, provide support in some way, contact them, let them know. Sound good, Josiah? Yes, yes. Thank you very much, Rick. Thank you for having me. And uh, uh, I want to thank the audience. Uh, anybody that is watching right now, thank you very much for taking the time. You, you gave us your time, and we appreciate it uh, very much. All right. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Have a happy Friday. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. All right, Rick. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs>